guys, I am Molly West, the Sensible Stitcher, and I'm here for a quick stitching update. Um, I have no finishes this time, but I've worked on several of my whips, so I might just start working my way through those. Um, I'm gonna need to, right here, I will add in who were the winners for my last giveaway. So I'll insert a video of my son selecting the last winners. Also, I will comment on your comments. Hi friends, so my um, son wasn't really as into the drawing today as he was last time, so I just used the random comment generator and I will insert a photograph of the winner's comments. Um, the winner for Forget Me Not by Blackbird Design is Moon Bow Weave. The winner for Kathy Barrett, A Visit from Spot, is C. Torres. The winner for Stacy Nash Primitives Prized Pig Pinky was Katharina Perry, and I will comment on your comment. And the winner for Swan Garden by Kathy Barrett was Julie Gomery. Well, congratulations. Um, okay, so next I'll just move right on into my whips. No new, um, actually I did have some new starts, but I'll get to those in just a minute. I'll show you my whips first. I have started keeping a travel piece, um, which I haven't done before, but I think a lot of people do it. Sarah, the stitching mommy, I see her show hers and um, I've always taken just one of my current whips in the car with me. Um, but I've actually set one aside to be my travel piece right now. And it is Modern Folk Embroidery, and it's Ave Maria. It's beautiful. So, so, so pretty. And I am stitching mine with, um, let's see. It is 32 count dark cobblestone Lugana by Zweigart. And I am using, um, I think it's either Ecru or Dark Ecru from, like, um, it's color number 1082 from Sulky. It's pretty. And here is my start. And these are arms reaching out. Maybe if I hold them together. What you're seeing here are this arm and this arm in the beginning of the plant. So anyways, it's it's kind of fun because it's, um, it's, you know about 200 by 200 the pattern is so it's not like it's a small one but compared to some of the ones I work on it's not huge it's um, because it's sulky it's really easy to um, see it and because it's 32 count it's easy to see it I can just take my readers in the car with me and it's been great and I have um, had it in the car with me for several weeks and it's worked well so I am going to um, keep on working on that one. And I will try to always remember to bring it inside from the car and show you all. Currently, I am in the car for about, oh, 30 to 45 minutes, three days a week. Two of my children are doing um, a special needs camp right now. And so that is my only car time is when I'm waiting to pick them up. 
Um, so the next thing that I worked on, these are in no particular order. When I say next, I don't mean chronologically. I just mean in my pile. Um, is Primitive Hairs Harriet Tubman, which is gorgeous. And I worked on this for one day. This is a loose weave fabric. It's a mystery fabric. And I think that it's a 30 count. And during this most recent rotation, I worked, and her collar was in place in the little outline right here across the top of her shirt. And I, I put in the brown in her shirt. So everything that's brown here other than the outline is from this most recent rotation. And that was really, really fun. There is a podcast that I listen to called Stuff You Missed in History Class, and um, they are currently doing, or they just recently did a two-part podcast on Harriet Tubman, so I listened to that while I was stitching. Let's see. The next thing that I worked on, and this must have been right after I recorded my last floss too, because this feels like a long time ago, was um, this Nativity Scene by Sarah Giramani, and there's the website. And I think I can tell you which part I filled in. I need to be better about doing like a before and after picture like so many folks. Oh yeah, I know exactly what I filled in this time. Never mind. Hopefully I can remember. Okay, so during this most recent stitch period, I filled in the entire rest of um, the baby Jesus and all of like his surrounding, um, the, the little crib, and I filled in, Mary was there, the donkey was there, but all of that dark backstitch, I'm mean, not backstitch, but fill in um, in the background, I put that in. So it doesn't look like much, but this is a really big piece. I mean, I'm guessing, you know, 300, 400 stitches. So that was kind of fun, and it was a little bit early for Christmas in July. So that was fun. I love that piece. I'll finish it one day. Okay, let's see what I did next. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> the last time I pulled out this piece, guys, I bragged and bragged and bragged about how fast I was stitching it. And it is a really quick stitch. These, everything is just perfect and it is quick. But I did something that I have never done before and, um, Let's all hope I never do it again. So, look, I've still got thread on here. Okay, which I don't do this either. This is how frustrated I was. You will never see a thread dangling. I can't, it's a pet peeve. I have to finish off that particular thread. And so for a thread to be dangling, you know I became irritated and just folded the thing up and put it in my project bag. So here's what happened, friends. Um, let's see. This is the top left. The last time that you saw that, this piece, I had stitched in all of the border area. So, I'm, I'm sorry, like the, the fanciful border bits. So, um, I, for whatever reason, decided that I would start, I, I, I then filled in the line. This was all stitched during this most recent stitch session. And I have no clue what made me do this, but I decided to stitch based on that space, that single space where there's no stitching and come out and stitch straight up from there and start stitching the outer edge. And this is not a ton of stitches for me to pull out, but what I learned is that I am, I am one row off on this red one. And this outer border is a little bit, uh, this is not it in its entirety. 
It's more intricate. So I, I'm a stitch off. I, I'm going to have to rip a lot of stitching out. And so I thought that I would show the work that I had done before I start ripping things out. I love this chart so much that it has to be perfect. So I wanted to show you how far I got before I became upset with myself. It was no fault of the, of the piece. It was, um, it was a strange choice on my part to start in the middle like that, but I'm just, I'll get it fixed. Moving on. Showing myself a little grace and moving on. Okay, what did I stitch next? That's not it. Let's see. This. Oh, this one's a great one. Okay, let me find the cover sheet. It's my long dog sampler, and I don't pull this one out often enough. This is, I'm stitching this on 50, 55 count Creams Weigart. The chart was gifted to me by my husband this past Christmas and the um, linen was gifted to me by my mother-in-law, and um, I've been taking my time on it. I'm on page one. <laughs> it is 55 counts, so I'm taking my time. But the last time that you all saw it, I had put in, there are two rows of two stitches around the outside, and I had put in the border, those two rows of two, and maybe just like a couple of random stitches here and there. And I am proud to say that I got, there's a fly in the house, Texas. Um, I got, let's see, my elephant stitched in. I stitched in more of the border areas. Um, I feel like I got a lot done during this most recent rotation. So I am, happy with that. I think it is beautiful. This is on 55 count cream Lugana and I am using, I mean, it's like a horse fly. I probably brought it back from the barn. 930 DMC and I'm using one color. The only thing that I'm not sure what I'm going to do is there are a couple of areas where it calls for back stitch and, um, so I'm not sure if I'm just going to omit that because it's 55 count. Um, I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do there, but I have I have some long ways to go. This is, I think, a 12 page um, project. So I have a long ways to go. Yeah, 12 pages and I'm not nowhere near finishing page one. So I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Okay, I also worked on, what's this? Oh yeah, I worked on uh, Leela Studio. Um, let's see, SL1862 Small Sampler. And I've made some color changes just based on what I had in stash. And during this most recent stitch, I added this motif, this motif, and I started a bird. So, not a ton, but um, it's so pretty. I'm just really enjoying this one, and I'm stitching this one. This is my last piece of R&R &R 36 count Abyssidarian, and I'm stitching it um, one over two with um, a combination of different um, over-dyed cotton flosses and I think maybe two DMCs, and I still love it. I've been working on that a long time. I pull it out and stitch like one or two motifs, and then I put it up, and I still just absolutely love it. The next two pieces I work on on the weekends. Um, this is a black and white copy, and it does no justice to the, to the chart, but this is Virtue, and it's a long dog sampler, and I worked this time, st I'm still in the border, and I've added purple flowers around, let's see if I can see. Um, I've added purple flowers around the outside of the border. Let's see, I can't see what I'm showing you. So that's where that one is, and it's still just super fun. The border, if it's anything like the last one, it's, I mean, it's just gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of doing, and I'm working on this one um, 
I try to work on it four days a month, and so if I work on it every other weekend, then I'll, I'll get there. Um, and I'm hoping to have a finish in April. The next one is also a weekend stitch. That one is on 28 count bright white Lugana, and I it is by Swigart, and it's the kind they sell at Hobby Lobby, just kind of easy breezy. The next one I work on on the weekends is GGR Bridged Power. And the last time that you guys saw this, I had finished what is my fifth page, which is right over in here, and I had started on this basket in page six, and I said, I don't wanna go to sleep tonight until I finish that basket, and I did. It, it took me a while, but I got the basket finished before the last time that you saw it. So my goal for myself was to stitch the, um, everything above the, let's see, I'm on this side over here. So everything above the basket in this way. And it was heavy stitching and I got it done. And it was on um, Sunday, I told my husband, I was like, that's the most I think I've ever stitched in a single day. I was like so dead set on getting that page finish. Um, so I am now finished with six of the 20 pages so I'm, I'm excited. I think I'm maybe like a month behind. I may maybe fell behind during April and May, but regardless, I love this. And I am stitching this on Picture This Plus 28 Count Moon Glow. And it's also a Lugana, which is my favorite. And this is how far I have come. My most recent stitching was this section from here. You see, I still have part of this flower to fill in. It's on the next page. So it was kind of, well, you can see where the line is. So from here to here and from there down. So the flowers and the stems. It's beautiful. I have, I, I'm absolutely still just in love with this piece. And the next time I pick it up, it will be um, the other half of the basket. And, um, whatever the other floral bit is in the top and then hopefully by like July or August the top area will, will be completely finished and that's the area that I've been saying if you're gonna split this in half I would cut it off exactly where I left it I mean you just need to stitch the um, top eight pages and that's that's what it would look like that kind of unbelievable floral arrangement but I'm gonna stitch the entire thing I like I like it all so that was for me a big success, but I will also say, I think that I stitched on it for like 10 or 11 hours. It was the most I've ever stitched in a single day. Um, my fingers got sore. <laughs> it was a lot of stitching, but I've, I've met my goal and for whatever reason that day, that felt very important to me. Okay, and then the next thing that happened was that I have been watching Lisa from Cross by Floss stitching all of her Mirabilias. And I have always loved Mirabilias and collected Mirabilias. In fact, I think that she even addressed people that are kind of like me where you love Mirabilias and so you buy them and you keep them in your stash, but you're kind of intimidated. For example, I've never beaded anything. I've never bought a Mill Hill kit. I have never beaded anything. So. I have kept all of these Mirabilias just put away all this time and I've stitched everything else and I felt very, very intimidated by them. And then I guess it was about, I don't know, like eight or eight months ago or something, I pulled out a Mirabilia that reminded me of my um, middle daughter, this one, and she is Princess Elena. And I started her, I thought, well, I mean, this one I really wanted to do for that particular child. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm just gonna start it. So it was the first one that when I bought it, I said, I would like it completely kitted. I've never done that with these before. Um, I have some where they're like partially kitted with like the Krynik and beads and um, like the, water lilies I can't even think of the Karen water lilies but this was the first one where I was like 
and the Lugana and the DMC and just I just wanted it ready to go so I got started on it way back when and as whips do it kind of fell to the wayside until Lisa from Cross by Floss started showing her Mirabilia May and I thought I've got to just pull mine back out again so the last time that I had worked on this I had started in the middle and I had filled in this purple area kind of up to a bit of the just the very tip of this white and so this most recent I pulled this out two Mondays in a row so my thinking was if I'll work on the one that has the most work for two Mondays and then the second two Mondays I can either work on a whip that um, has never been most of mine have never even been touched or opened so work on like a new to me Mirabilia or work on a whip that has less progress then I can actually get a finish and then something else would move up to twice twice a month so during those two Mondays I put in so many stitches, I'm so happy. So I got all of this, all of this, and I had barely started stitching in this little bit of white, so I got it all the way up this way, and it came up um, higher. And then what else did I stitch in? I think I even, I think I even stitched in parts of this yellow and orange down here. Like, I just got a ton of stitching done so anyways I'm super super excited and motivated and to this point this is still my only Mirabilia that is not missing even one single strand of thread it is 100% kitted I have about 12 or 15 that are partially kitted either they they have all of the sort of accessories and I haven't put the DMC with them or what have you. I mean, they're in all sorts of different states of um, partial, partial kittedness. Um, so then that left me with two more Mirabilia Mondays. This one is not a Mirabilia, it's a Nora Corbett. Um, but I worked on this one yesterday and she is called, I think the Rain Queen, let's see. The Rain Queen. And the reason that I remembered to pull this out was because I was watching the Sunshine Stitchers and EJ mentioned that she picked this up from the freebie table and I thought, oh my goodness, I have that chart. I love that chart. I'm gonna stitch that chart. And the Nora Corbett's are a little tiny. They are so cute. So I grabbed the flo some floss and I grabbed a um, piece of 28 count mushroom Lugana. The last one was on a 32 count lavender Lugana. This one is on 28 count mushroom Lugana. And I stitched this much of her dress. I mean, it was, this is several hundred stitches, but I just grabbed the most prominent color in her dress and found just a 10 by 10 row that went straight down the middle and I just stitched from top all the way down. I mean, I think I have just a little bit left of that light blue right in here. And the next time that I pick her up, I can start filling in her dress um, and moving outward from the middle. I, I started my piece in the center on this one. Um, so this was yesterday, this was day one. I got a lot done on that one, I'm happy with that. Um, and so that's another Mirabilia and except it's not, it's a Nora Corbett, but I, I am stitching, I think that Nora Corbett and or Mirabilia, since it's the same designer, are good to go for Mondays. And then the second, the third, so that was my first new start. This is my second new start, but the third Mirabilia that I worked on this month. And this one is Sleeping Princess. And this reminds me of my youngest daughter, um, the one that's high movement reminds me of my middle daughter. That girl is on the go. This one reminds me of my youngest daughter and she actually was like, oh yeah, that's just like me. The, the girl is um, extraordinary at relaxing. 
We took our kids to a walkthrough zoo when they were little tiny and um, we were like holding their hands. I mean, I think she was like two and she finally looked at my husband. He's a big guy and she's like, could you just carry me on your shoulders? Walking is not my favorite mode of transportation. And she was like this tiny little girl. <laughs> she, was an, she was early to chit chat. She had a lot to say. Anyway. So that, it, it, walking is not her favorite mode of transportation. So this got one day of work and I started down here in the bedding. Um, I guess on this side over here. No, this side over here. And I'm working on the, all those kind of hot pink fuchsia colors. Ah, so pretty. And this one is on, let's see, I think it's on that fly. We have a guest star today. Um, this is on 32 count platinum, I think. And so that's how far I got, but that was just one day of work, so I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay, so those were all of my whips and starts. So two new starts and several whips that I worked on. And I have some haul. These things are just um, pretty random. Okay, so I actually, I think all of these things are pretty random. Okay, let me start with today. I was at the Stitch Niche picking up some more like Krynic and beads for some of my other Mirabilia. Since I'm now all in on that, and. Um, the Stitch Niche is my LNS. It's in Arlington, Texas, and I love their setup. I love their setup. They have um, things like that are seasonal, and one area has um, it, it's almost like a magazine rack. With do y'all remember like um, back when they used to sell CDs and tapes? Um, and they would put like the artist's name across the top, and then you would pull back that. Um, like plastic perforation or you know divider and you could glance through all those CDs made by that artist they have that except with each of the different um, designers and so I got found myself over in carriage house samplings and I picked this one up Shenandoah which is so pretty and I picked up nature's peace and those are really pretty and kind of, I think those are both older patterns. Um, oh no, this one, Nature's Peace is from 2020. I mean, how did I sleep through that? When was this from? Uh, Stitcher. She has shown this piece and I have liked it for a really long time, but it was expensive. And so I didn't pull the trigger on it until um, earlier this month. Then I bought um, three really old charts. And this one I don't see a date on. Maybe this, maybe this isn't super old. Um, the traditional sampler chart by Moira Blackburn. Isn't that pretty? I, I love the tree. I love that tree. So I'm adding that to my collection. The last two are old. Um, this one is Madonna and Child and it's a Bucilla kit. And it's so pretty and I don't have any idea when when or if I will ever stitch that but I love having it in case I decide to this one is so unlike me but I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic for my grandmother we are 
My husband and I are in the process of purchasing. Uh, my grandparents and my mom and dad had a little family cabin in New Mexico, and I take my kids there multiple times a year. And so my husband and I are in the process of purchasing the old one, the old, old one that my grandparents used to have. And so my grandmother was a quilter and something about this when I saw it, I mean, for the nine millionth time, I just felt like I really wanted to buy it. And again, I don't know when I would ever stitch it, but it just reminded me of my grandmother. So I bought it and I don't know if I'll stitch it, but I love that I have it. Um, and then I think I just forgot to show this on my last one, but this came from, um, Garon Stitchery, and it's 40 count elephant run by Fox and Rabbit. I don't even know what size it is. It doesn't say. It looks like a, looks like a fat eighth. And then some bow and needles. Um, and as always, their service was great. And then my daughter and I have been antiquing a little bit, looking to see if there's anything that we would like to put in this old cabin that we're in the process of buying. Hopefully, uh, I'm gonna film a floss tube from there so that you guys can see it. It's a really, really um, neat place. And while we were antiquing, I haven't even taken this out of the um, paper, but while we were antiquing, I saw a tiny sampler on the wall that was it's it was stitched in 1928 and um I just think that it is really really charming wait is it 1928 1927 and so I bought it And the initials are almost mine exactly. And so I saved the stitches, which is one of my absolute favorite things to do. It was very, very reasonably priced. And I love it. I'm gonna hang it in my sewing room exactly as it is. I'm not even gonna change the frame. I'm not changing anything. I absolutely adore it. And it's super interesting. The stitches, I'm gonna see how close I can get. The stitches don't touch one another. The crosses don't. It's on a really fine linen and they don't actually, each cross does not touch one another. It's so beautiful and charming. I'm so thank, I'm, I'm so happy that I ran across this. I found this at the Montgomery Antique Mall in Fort Worth, Texas and I got a good deal on it, in my opinion. And I'm super excited, yay! So even though I didn't have a finish this week, I do have a finish to show you, someone else's. Um, and guys, I guess that's about it. I do have a giveaway um, for this time. Let's see, those are from last time. So the giveaway for this week is the Portuguese Bird Sampler. It's by Barbara Anna Designs. And it, this is beautiful. I have it fully kitted for myself. This was gonna be a May start, and then I decided to simplify things this past spring, so I didn't start it. But I did buy two copies of it. I was planning on doing the giveaway when I showed my new start. Um, that may be a while. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and do the giveaway. If you would like this, just use the word bird. Um, thanks so much, guys, and I will see you all soon. Bye.